These things, ring gears, there's two of them actually here. There's one right there and there's one right there. Are tremendously useful for a whole range of things. Maybe an orrery, a turntable, planetary gears, an internal gear for a generation set. They find lots of uses, so it's handy to know how to make them. Now, some people will suggest one way is just to take a gear profile, make it a hollow, put it in with a circle, merge the two, and hey, presto, you have a ring gear. And that's true, it kind of works, particularly if the gear that you're going to engage with it has a slightly different modulus, so there's lots of tolerance and slack, then sure, it'll work. But it's a bit of a clutch to change the module and say you want to have this professionally 3D printed or release it on Thingiverse and who knows what 3D printer it's going to go on, then it can be a little unsatisfying. Luckily, there are things out there to help. And what I'm talking about are gear builder apps. Now, unfortunately, quite a lot of them are paid for. Some of them are incredibly complex to use and some of them just don't work. But this one, by Dr. Hesmer is free to use and I find stunningly easy and is able to generate the gears that you're looking for. So a regular gear, rack and pinion gear, or what we're specifically interested in, an internal gear. Now we have a look at the values that we can put in there. Actually, we don't need to change that much. One of the important ones is the clearance. Because I'm on the clock, of course, on the clearance of something like Tinkercad, which prints at 0.2 millimeters, then we want to set that clearance at 0.2, and that'll give us plenty of clearance so that we can print in gears that actually intermesh. None of the rest of this really matters apart from circular pitch. Here, circular pitch is set at 8. The circular pitch is the, uh, distant, uh, the ratio of the distances between two adjacent teeth. However, it can be used quite happily as you know, a guess at what the module would be because the module is the ratio of the number of teeth to the pitch circle. So if we have that as two, what we'll effectively get is a module two gear tooth and that's my favourite module, so handy enough. And here we can see we get two gear teeth. When we've got 30 there, it'll give us a ring gear. We'll be popping minus 30. Sorry, when we've got positive 30, it'll give us a normal gear. When we pop in minus 30, then we'll actually get a ring gear. And here we've got gear one, center hole diameter. We don't want it because we're going to have a great big hole. It's a ring gear, set it as zero. This is gear two, which will be the meshing gear. So let's set that at 10 and we'll give it an eight millimeter hole. Now we can display both of them with that pull down menu gear here, one and two. If we click update, it'll generate the picture that we want of our actual gear set. So you can see our ring gear there, and you can see our meshing gear right there. And if we go here, we can download that as an SVG. It will download the whole thing. So what we need to do is show gear one only, click update, we'll get gear one, and then we can download that and then do the same for the other gear and we'll get both gears. Of course, once you've got it as an STL, you can re-import it into your design program of choice, which for me, of course, is Tinkercad. And I've been making quite a few of those in various sizes and I found it an absolute breeze just being able to specify it like that. So I thought you might find it useful too. Of course, I'll put the links to the actual site in the description below, should anybody want to use it, and should anybody be working on something where making ring gears would be awesome if it was really, really simple, which turns out it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.